Hello everybody, this is Primo's B4 Belarus program with our respectable, beloved Vlad Baranj. Vlad, hello. Hello. Vlad is a country mm. consultant, media analyst, the guy with a critical sharp mind on what's going on in Belarus and around the world. And uh, today the major theme is uh, holidays in Belarus. Of course, the uh, information uh, incentive for this program was February 23rd, one of your beloved holidays in inverted commas, of course. <laughs> We'll be covering Soviet holidays that are still around in Belarus, some with some new holidays, religious holidays, and uh, the way Belarusians celebrate holidays. So let's start with this uh, gender pair of holidays, February 23rd and March 8th. And uh, what do you think about them? Because 20, February 23rd is called officially the Day of Defenders of the Motherland. And uh, it does not refer particularly to the army, to people in the military, to people who wear uniform. It's just a very broad notion of defenders. So how do you see that? Because when you see that go to the kindergarten, go to schools, to uh, government institutions, people refer to defender as somebody who served in the army. What do you think about this holiday? Why is it still around? Well, uh, you know, uh, before we continue with that, I would like to say that uh, to name this program would be proper something like holidays, Belarusian holidays is the mirror of Belarusian society <laughs> or Belarusian mind, yeah, mindset, course, whatever. I mean, this uh, specific uh, hol a a again, a uh, little disclaimer, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, holiday is something, you know, it's, here we go, go into linguistic land mm -hmm. and um, Holy Land is something religious, yeah, right. you, uh, you know, just and in, mm -hmm. in, in Soviet times, uh, you know, religion has been banned and it came, the communists created semi-religion Soviet Union was a country of atheism, so uh, I remember when uh, my parents urged me to go to church with them and the first baptism was um, uh, in, the con in the condition of uh, secrecy, yes, uh, exactly. a kind of uh, a pair of uh, Komsomol members and uh, representatives of the school were next uh, to the entrance to the uh, church, and they put everybody uh, made made a list of those All who right, attended yes. church. So, uh, in order not to get caught by such a police of morality and atheism, we went to church in a different place in the countryside. Right. That was how it was done. So Bolsheviks they created a substitute for this religion, right. which is communism, and of course they had their own, uh, you know, holy people like Lenin, yep. whose uh, remnants are holy remnants, unholy remnants <laughs> are still there, you know, visible, you know, you go, you can go and touch, not, not touch, but you know, watch him. And um, well, that's uh, the whole, you know, it, like um, mimicking this, uh, like Orthodox, Russian Orthodox Church. Mm -hmm. So. When you mention uh, this, uh, so the, the these days, which we mentioned again, mm -hmm. this like 23rd of February, which is Defenders Day, which uh, actually uh, the day, like professional, okay, uh, I didn't finish. So we, let's let's call them celebrate celebrations mm -hmm. because you know holiday is something like uh, well anyway holiday was a day of celebration so this holiday is um, it was artificially created as uh, first it was initially it was created as the day uh, as professional holiday professional mm, February twenty third right uh, well. Well, it are you was, talking about what, what kind of holiday yes, are talking about? February 23rd, yes. It was, I say, even historically, there was not a single battle, not a like heroic uh, yes, display is. of uh, Russian, Russian or Ukrainian people. It was just taken incidentally, accidentally by some Soviet rulers and said, this is it. Let's celebrate this particular uh, holiday on this particular day. Uh, it. Well, they, they officially, they consider this day as the... <clears throat> as the first day of creation of the Red Army. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it just like uh, Red Army was born, so it is the professional mil military holiday. Mm -hmm. It's fine. No, military, I mean, we have a lot of uh, and, uh, every day in the calendar probably have the day of mm -hmm. plumber, day of a builder, day of a mm -hmm. driver, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. many professional days which people celebrate and mm -hmm. I mean on their workplaces. That's right. And that's fine. But this day uh, mm -hmm. was actually according to the calendar 
was the same day, just on different calendars, on mm -hmm. Gregorian and uh, mm -hmm. Julian calendar as uh, March, March 8th. 8th. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it's actually the same day. Do you believe that uh, Rose Luxem Luxembourg and uh, the other lady, I don't remember her name, uh, came out with the Clara idea. Zetkin. Clara Zetkin. Clara uh, Zetkin came out with this International Women's Day uh, to commemorate this difference in the calendars. No, no, no. It's just uh, shifted. It just shifted right. the day when they, they, they adopted the regular mm -hmm. calendar. So the day just was left behind, and you know, it just probably. Probably difficult to say. There are many theories about it, including the theory mm -hmm. that this is actually mm -hmm. Jewish Purim, mm -hmm. and uh, well, just uh, mm -hmm. since the, you know this, those That's ladies right. were Jewish, and so they, they <laughs> of course they, they this <laughs> the conspiracy is over there. Okay, but, uh, but anyway, so this day uh, in time, this uh, this twenty third mm -hmm. of uh, February just changed to not just military day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the day of a man, right. man, male. manhood, male, man, male, so, male holiday, right, and exactly. it was like, like propaganda in Soviet times that everybody had, every man, man's man had to serve in army, and if he didn't serve in the army, you're not man's man. So just like that, you know, and. Uh, uh, so this day is mostly considered here not as professional military uh, holiday, as, but man's. But that's the uh, people's folk connotation of this holiday. Because officially, when you look at the calendar, you see this. That's what makes uh, this holiday confusing, right? So is it about ma male versus female? Is it uh, people who served in the army are in the army or wear uniform versus those who don't, or something else? And that's why it makes it so like a no. Uh, on the one hand, people s uh, remember still those uh, old days when uh, this holiday was. Celebrated uh, like a, if you are a boy, right, of seven, you get some presents from girls of, of the, the same age, and then whether you you are in the army, you were in the army, you still are uh, congratulated on on this particular uh, February twenty third day with uh, and the traditional gifts were like socks, uh, perfume, vodka, vodka, of course. vodka chocolate, <laughs> like many minor things, yes. and then uh, uh, gradually people, men who were congratulated and were uh, given kind words and uh, celebrated on the 23rd of March, March considered uh, a must to congratulate women on the 8th of March, which again lost its initial communist or gender uh, attitude and turned into a holiday of all women. And again, it's not against discrimination, it's just if you're a woman, you must get a bouquet of tulips or any other flowers, or you must uh, be treated as a queen on this particular day. Well, that's again, uh, it's again, this is some twisted mirror of the society. Well, uh, when women are to be celebrated as women once a year, yeah. like their professional holiday, so to say. You know. Yeah, that's always uh, confusing, <laughs> right? So for me, for me, like treating uh, a woman with dignity, with respect, with integrity, with uh, or uh, it's every day, right? So you treat your wife, you treat your relatives, your friends with respect as uh, individuals, as uh, as uh, people who are equal to you, right? But if you uh, am make an emphasis, this is 8th of March, that's why you, you should do uh, your house, uh, your house or your apartment, you should do laundry, you should cook, and by the end of the day, your male duty is over, then that's definitely this kind of holiday interpretation humiliates women. Well, 8th of March is a really holiday because it is a day off. Mm -hmm. uh, general on state's level day off, so it is certainly uh, mm -hmm. unlike uh, this mm -hmm. day of the defender, mm -hmm. this man's day. Mm -hmm. But again, I tell you uh, why, why it is considered this 23rd, considered mm -hmm. as man's day, because there is a women's day, mm -hmm. uh, 8th of March, and mm -hmm. here is so just to, 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 to make a balance. Mm -hmm. Since there is a men's day, uh, women's day, so there is men's day. So right. in popular mind, they are considered like that. Like what twin, is, twin holidays. Yes, and um, 
Uh, actually, uh, to tell you the mm -hmm. truth, I, I, um, I don't celebrate. In my family, we don't celebrate. I, I personally never congratulate, never <laughs> take, you know, uh, everything is just, just because for me, it's one of the terrible heritage, you know, of the Soviet Union, of Soviet, you know, Soviet mind, of Soviet communist past, and you know this, and uh, a lot of people who are nationally minded, they are, they never celebrated because they're communists, they're, they're bad with bad aura, so to mm -hmm. say. Yeah, but at the same time, look at uh, the uh, penetration of these holidays into our culture. Uh, of course, this kind of Soviet uh, militarism right. in the holiday is over. It yes. doesn't have any association with that. So people treat that like, okay, so let's have this defender, general notion of who defends motherland. But again, this notion refers not only to men, but to everybody. I think that it refers to intellectuals, to people who fight for ideas much more than anything else, especially in the later in the age of Fourth Industrial Revolution, right. uh, where information is getting much more in important. Uh, earlier, uh, physical brutal force was a must, right? So yes, you, yes. you you have to carry heavy weapons, you have to be muscled, big man in order it to... It is still there in Belarus. Yeah, but it's, it's still, it's part of that truth. But again, if we think of it, even, like, look, talk about Chris, uh, Christmas, right? Right. Uh, that was on the 25th of December, yes. not because Jesus Christ was born that particular day, because there are different areas and they believe that some, mm, that he was born in some way in September. But most of uh, holidays of religious nature uh, happened to be in December, late December, because of this second holiday of the sun. The sun. That's because the, of the uh, particular trajectory of the sun. Right, right. And th th that's why it's like 23rd of February. We have these memories of the past, something that we celebrate. We don't know what. It's like 8th of March. Again, oh, well, let's celebrate beauty, let's celebrate spring, let's celebrate flowers, let's celebrate something which is different from what uh, communist uh, fem feminists uh, thought about a long, long time ago. When I was in school, they taught us uh, to sing a song. My dear, dear mommy, I love you very much. <laughs> I want you to be happy on the 8th of March. March. <laughs> only be okay. happy, be happy on the, the 8th of March. March. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to uh, two, three more, uh, like two more uh, Soviet holidays which are still around. May 1st and then 7th, 7th of, September, of November. Yes. Because this is again May first, and they are red letter uh, dates on the in, the in the calendar, and we still celebrate them. For the May first is like Labor Day, oh, yes. which is again, different. The day off. That's day off. Yeah, important exactly. for population. That's it's right. a real holiday. I mean, like holiday. I mean, like celebration mm -hmm. day. Well, yes, it's uh, it's day off, like mm -hmm. like Christmas, for example, yep. Yep. or like. Uh, whatever, like in the United States, you take uh, days of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which are national holidays, like mm -hmm. Independence Day, uh, <coughs> Thanksgiving Day. I think this. I think that well, this first of May. Uh, is still a holiday, but people treat that as the beginning of a long weekend where they go and go to Dacha to their gardens to do some uh, household chores, right. and it, it doesn't have that particular meaning of proletariat, working class people fought against bourgeoisie, against capital for their rights. Because people right now they are very confused in not, not only history but in the this class struggle. Well, for. In a sense, I remember in Soviet times when uh, usually workers, students, just pu pupil in, in school, mm -hmm. they, they had to you know to go to those uh, mm -hmm. uh, how do you call the big marches, mm -hmm. uh, pageant marches, you know this with these transparents, with these banners, with slogans. When I was a school kid, uh, we every year we take took part in this May demonstration. We had uh, portraits of uh, communist leaders, oh, yes. Lenin, Marx, and everything. That was a must. If you are, I remember uh, there was a scandal on the first of uh, May, nineteen eighty-three. That was our last uh, May first celebration. And we wanted just to have fun, to decorate and to be creative. So instead of uh, taking Soviet-style portraits and slogans, we had like 30 balloons each. Just a matter of, huge, just a matter. Usually uh, little kids, like yes, yes. Uh, for, uh, primary school kids, right. had balloons. And now here, like big guys of yes. 16, 17, and then this column, we were in the end of that, and full of balloons. 
And then teachers, and uh, we had this uh, communist uh, supervisor who interpreted our behavior, which was definitely fun without any ideology, as almost subversive activities yes. against party lines. Saboteurs, yes. 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 Ideological saboteurs. Ideological saboteurs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ideological sabotage. Sabotage, the, right. The, the, and we were like, what? Mm -hmm. Just we had wanted to have fun. Come on. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, well. So why uh, why do you believe it's still in? It's is it because like May first and the government wants uh, people to go to Duchess and take care of their households, or is it just tradition and nobody wants to uh, uh, put an end to this uh, historical uh, atavism? Well, on on uh, on the state level, it's understandable because uh, current regime it upholds all yep. Soviet uh, traditions. It, it pretends for the. Like uh, like uh, Russia officially inherited uh, this all these heritage of the Soviet Union, but Belarus and Lukashenko, mm -hmm. uh, namely, they 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 claim that they are uh, the true uh, true heirs, you know, of, mm -hmm. of the Soviet Union, the little Soviet Union in Belarus. Yeah, right, so right. Just mm -hmm. and so it's understandable for for common people. Well. <clears throat> Since there are no intellectuals, they are, they consume what they are given, so they they have this. Oh, good! We have another yes. day off, right? Good. And so they and without any uh, meaning. Yes, any especially when their calendar goes in such way that, they, for example, first of uh, Mar for first of May, for example, on say Friday, there will be three days off. Uh, in a row, and then there will be like if it will be like Monday again, mm -hmm. yeah, right, or right, if right. it will be on uh, Tuesday, for example, they will replace the Monday for mm -hmm. another Saturday, so it will be four days. But we compare, let's uh, like food habit these days. February twenty third, yes. you don't have anything special, right? So usually usual stuff, probably some more beer, some more some drinks, and but on the eighth of March, you uh, the. Uh, table holiday or like the formal okay, way to meet them is always must be some uh, good stuff on the table flowers must tulip it's prices it's a good reason so for good good reason for drunk dr drinking yeah. party for especially I remember every if you take any any business here mm -hmm. organization they must have there is a drinking party on the day before and some exactly. very rich they have what is called corporative here Corporate, right, right. there's all well, the employees of the company yeah, get the, together to get drunk. Yeah, yeah, party like like the United States called party. Yeah, right. And uh, so they they have this uh, and they celebrate and uh, celebration. Okay, but uh, when you go to um, first of May, May of uh, first May is usually first uh, if the weather is good and it's yes. warm. It's a good opportunity to go to to have barbecue around uh, the open air. And just go outside, just have fun. Yeah, yeah right, just right, right. Go. And then November. 7th. Why do you believe it's still on, uh, still present in the Belarusian calendar? Because it's got, okay, great but short, and whatever, a revolution, which was, was yes. a coup d'etat, when the uh, whole world uh, collapsed under this uh, destructive forces of communism, Bolshevism, and still we're celebrating, instead of mourning, we celebrate that. What do we celebrate? Even Russia replaced it yeah, with, uh, right, with some other substitute. patriotic day on the fourth yes. of November, which was dedicated <laughs> yes. to the time when uh, Moscovites uh, threw out poles, the poles in, which were, in the beginning which of the seventeenth century. Yeah, there were, were the, the Belarusians and Lithuanians and Polish uh, exactly. Commonwealth, which were fighting against yeah. Russians and so Russian actually uh, Moscovites, not Russians. So what but, does it tell a foreigner about Belarus, Belarusians, and Russian authorities, when they still have Lenin's around, they red banners, and November seventh as almost sacred holiday, we would uh, Lukashenko and uh, the people around did not even try to change its nature. Well, this again, as I mentioned, that's uh, they uphold all these uh, uh, traditions of Soviet times, so they they pretend they are heirs of mm -hmm. uh, Soviet Empire, mm -hmm. of uh, great deeds of Lenin etc. Um, 
that's hard to say what what's in their minds, mm-hmm. but they still uh, in, in in Russian, you know, there is, we, we, mm-hmm. many times we mentioned this word in Russian, which is called savok, yeah, which is um, derived from the Soviet, yeah, and which actually it could be translated as a spade, yeah, and uh, shower. No, so, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it just sounds like savok is uh, probably the uh, origin of the word is uh, from uh, Soviet, which is Soviet that's considered what I mean. to be it comes the from Soviet. From Power, Soviet, right? but uh, since it sounds like this is shawl, mm-hmm. uh, it, it refers to some menial, you know, unqualified labor yeah, right, of right. such job men who, you know, labor with this savok, mm-hmm. and they, and uh, so this uh, actually sounds sounds funny in Russian, and um, so they 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 just uh, they created. You see, again, as I said. Mm-hmm. Earlier, uh, in Soviet times, mm-hmm. all these holidays, so-called mm-hmm. holidays, they were uh, they were quasi-religious holidays. They were subst- substitutes for real. You religious cannot holidays. choose but celebrate them. There was a right. must. Right. So like you're a student, or you're a school uh, boy, or you uh, uh, work at a plant. Right. You must attend this particular demonstration to and, <clears throat> show loyalty to symbols. You should carry them. Yes. And that was part of that. You see, right now it's and, and the case. They, and you see, and, and somewhere in archetypical memory, they they are still there. For example, for all the generations who mm-hmm. are still have uh, this huge nostalgia mm-hmm. about the Soviet times, they, no mm-hmm. matter how bad it was, they will say, "Oh, this was nice." Well, they were young that time. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, with uh, this. Uh, this mm-hmm. what is called Great October Socialist Revolution mm-hmm. holiday, this mm-hmm. 7th of November. Uh, in my mind, in my childhood, it was great. Mm-hmm. It was it was a real holiday. I remember when we lived nearby. My my father used to work for this you know this party, Communist Party Central Committee, mm-hmm. and uh, we always had uh, tickets. Mm-hmm. The first rows there, and when the, the central uh, square in Minsk, mm-hmm. which is now. Uh, uh, you know, where is uh, near the presidential administration, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a feeling of something, you know, something important. Mm-hmm. It was cool to see how this uh, military are marching, mm-hmm. all these uh, right. tanks. All this, you know, military equipment. But usually tanks, and uh, this is kind of a, uh, another holiday that we still uh, we had for many, many years, mm-hmm. and it still has it some uh, true value. We're talking about May, uh, n- May 9th of May, which is oh, a yes. victory day, and still it's a uh, it's a very graphic and very clear. This is the end of the Second World War, which again the confusion is between Second World War and Great Patriotic War. Yes. This is the cliche from Soviet textbooks, but still uh, fashion. Germany, Nazi Germany, and Soviet Union clashed, and uh, over like 42 million people died, and uh, that's a very valid reason to celebrate. Well, again, it, it uh, first, uh, you know, this uh, it, this day mm-hmm. has turned into quasi-religious mm-hmm. holiday again mm-hmm. during Brezhnev era mm-hmm. when uh, when Brezhnev somewhere in the Ill, 60s right yes uh, yeah and in the end of 60s so when, when Brezhnev came to power and his you know Brezhnev his ilk they they again they claimed their mm-hmm. power uh, referring to mm-hmm. the great achievements during the mm-hmm. war mm-hmm. The, the heroes of war mm-hmm. and they created this cult of war veterans mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. special privileges etc mm-hmm. etc et <clears throat> mm-hmm. So uh, again, this is one of the very, very good example of uh, mm-hmm. this quasi-religious, mm-hmm. uh, so mm-hmm. quasi-religion, I would say. This typical uh, holiday of, uh, of of religious nature because they glorify mm-hmm. something that and that. Well, if you look at say D Day in, in in Western mm-hmm. countries, mm-hmm. just just. Just you know, veterans would gather. And now they no longer, but in past they would go, to, you know, commemorate, remember mm-hmm. the dead, and etc. Mm-hmm. But here is it just like with military parades, right. and it's again, if you look at at, uh, at uh, like religion, major religions like Catholic or mm-hmm. Orthodox, mm-hmm. they have these uh, mass proceedings with you That's know right. with icons, yeah, right. with uh, statues, marching, and with uh, a lot yeah. of priests. 
Very exactly. sad people. The same. I mean, uh, the the matrix is the same. So here we we'll deal not with. Uh, with a simple state celebration, but it is really a holy day uh, I think that of it's religious a, nature. Right now, when uh, the Kremlin is trying to uh, to force into its own version, the only version of, of history, and it uh, persecutes even those who do not agree with that, and that's even Victory Day, 9th of May. Oh yeah, they emphasize is, a lot. Uh, yeah. 9th of May is uh, treated differently because, well, uh, all of us uh, fought against like, Nazis, right? But then, look at uh, the conflict and war between Ukraine and uh, Russia right now, right? Uh, Georgia and Russia, even Belarus and Russia right now. And even now, like this, uh, the invitation of the Kremlin to attend uh, the 75th celebration of Victory Day on the 9th of uh, May this year is uh, interpreted in a different way. Because Lukashenko, he said, okay, I have to be with my own people because my own my country that time was part of the Soviet Union. We also fought uh, together against fascism, right? Ukraine, likewise. So instead of uh, this uh, urge to unite, to get together against the common enemy, which still exists, you know, totalitarianism uh, and dog dogmatism and fundamentalism never disappeared, right? Uh, still, this holiday divides people, divides nature, and even is the course of, uh, of uh, hostility among people. Well... Every, I, I believe, you know, uh, and you my attitude toward these holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm very host hostile. I mean, like, I'm very mm -hmm. not hostile, but um, I consider them as just this, you know, this like uh, rudiment of Soviet era, which are there. We have to get rid of this. Like, mm -hmm. uh, it's like um, uh, I don't know, something like like a cancer of Soviet uh, times. So you have to get rid of it, throw it away, so this would no longer grow. But um, uh, but uh, in, that's for intellectuals, you know. But for, for popular mind, yes, they're holidays, they're good, and people, uh, they, they, they just follow the, 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 the general trend. Mm -hmm. Well, it's fine, everybody celebrates, it's especially when propaganda, mass mm -hmm. propaganda says mm -hmm. you have to do this and the people seldom go against uh, official mm -hmm. position. It takes courage, mm -hmm. or internal or out, uh, external exactly. courage. So uh, it naturally divides people. Because, for example, like recently, like mm -hmm. uh, this 23rd of, uh, of, uh, of February mm -hmm. or 8th of March, mm -hmm. when, you know, somebody who, you know, like from my classmates, uh, mm -hmm. who, you know, girls who, you know, from the past, they would celebrate, oh, you know, you celebrate, you know, congratulations <laughs> with that, you know. I would write <laughs> them something very cynical, like, no, you know, just like, you know, but this... They didn't even so bad. Those, those who know me, they would never dare to do no, such but a thing. It's, uh, usually but, you know, but, well, because, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm straightforward... In Inertia in the way I people treat others, like okay, you remember those we we were in that f historical framework and we celebrated. So people believe they, okay. they don't look. Do not how, have this ideological. Well, yes, uh, but I try to explain. I try to explain them. They say, "Why? Well, why don't you mean? Did you not serve in the army?" Say, "Yes, I served." Right. But you know, uh, much more people served in in their term in prison. Mm -hmm. Wow, you were not in prison. So I was in prison. I can people didn't understand. I uh, was what? Well, for me and for many, you know, people like me, uh, this military service in Soviet army was, was you know, under force, under brutal force. Yeah, you know that how I got into Siberia uh, when uh, this conscription office. Yes. When uh, this officer looked at my document, saying, "Oh, you're a Pole, so you're an enemy of the Soviet Union. Yes. You yes. must go to Siberia to meet your uh, ancestors." <laughs> like, oh, come! On. I, did, I, I thought that was a joke. It but when I joke. landed up in Siberia, right, I thought right. that, well, and, uh, there is little joke in every joke, yeah. but the rest is uh, true. When that was a very clear uh, case of uh, ethnic discrimination against people. I, d I didn't even, I didn't know anything about solidarity at that time in Poland, but due to my fifth column uh, the graph in the passport, I landed in Siberia. You know, I became anti -com uh, convinced anti-communist mm -hmm. and anti-Soviet, exactly in the Soviet army. Yep. Because, you know, every day I was there, I was thinking, <laughs> well, People serve in, in, in prison, they term in prison yeah. for what they did. 
I did right. nothing. Why I'm here? Duty. Your duty was. Right. Duty for what? Okay. Uh, now yes. religious holidays. Right. Something that we did not have in the Soviet Union. Now we have uh, Christmas. We have Easter. And you have double. You have double right. Christmas holiday celebration. We have double Easter. We have uh, different like uh, like right now we have pancake holidays. Right. We have uh, Lent hol- uh, like which is in between between uh, uh, on, on, in b- before. Uh, uh, Easter, we have this Lent, which is considered to be the time of uh, temperance, of uh, constraints, and uh, kind of, of modesty. Right. So, uh, do you believe that instead of one Soviet religion, the Belarusians jumped into this different uh, cage of uh, mysticism, uh, religious mysticism, and they uh, are looking for uh, the alternative to Soviet symbols, Soviet holidays, Soviet, Soviet holidays. Yeah, exactly. Uh, instead of, you know, true faith, many people came to true faith, came, became true mm-hmm. believers, and, well, they still, at that time, because was during Soviet times, you couldn't even mm-hmm. have a Bible. Bible mm-hmm. was actually considered as Mm-hmm. anti-Soviet literature because uh, they were confiscated on mm-hmm. the border and people would get in prison for smuggling anti-Soviet yep. literature. I was wondering that uh, who on earth would smuggle some anti-Soviet literature? What kind of that? Solzhenitsyn? No. There were Bibles, Bibles. as they found out Bibles. later. Yes. And it was a very big competitor yeah. to Soviet-style religion. Right. And uh, But now uh, everything is you know available and uh, people those who you know true believers they would i uh, my you know my uh, like experience i know people they would sell very seldom celebrate those those mm-hmm. uh, quasi religious mm-hmm. holidays which mentioned before so they celebrate real holidays mm-hmm. real uh, yeah. real religious holidays let's call them orthodox or catholic mm-hmm. uh, or protestant and they still stick to uh, rituals, they go to church, they uh, pray, they baptize kids, they try to kind of, you know, not imitate, but try to live by these standards. That's the minority. That's minority. the minority. I mean, those who are true believers. Mm-hmm. But the majority of people, they are, they live in uh, in the realm of, uh, not of faith, right. but <laughs> of superstition. <laughs> exactly. So they are, they consider this something is there, well, there is some God, yeah, maybe let's just propitiate him with Somebody. some ritual and for people, the, people ask are you Christian yeah of course 82 percent of Belarusians consider them Christians yes, that was baptized and so uh, yeah but uh, what do you do how do you uh, do you perform as a Christian so do you go to church do you pray do you do this uh, like every third every tenth goes to church on a regular basis that's it so church attendance is like seven ten percent that's it right well it's uh, usually uh, church has been inflated when those Celebrations, yeah, holidays especially come. when there's holy water being oh, yeah. distributed. They, they you know, line in huge lines. You can I don't know. So look, like, with canisters, with buckets. But for me, it's such a great hypocrisy. When you, superstition. You, it's, but you, it's hypocrisy, superstition, right? On this particular day, right? Somehow, ordinary water turns saint, and it's better for you than uh, treating your mind, than getting rid of superstition and stupidities. No, it's potion. It's, <laughs> it's potion. It's not. It's not a uh, holy water. It's potion. That's it's right. just you know. It's, it has magical. Uh, it's again. It, this is here realm of superstition. Superstition is not faith. Faith is f- f- uh, yeah. like faith in when the, when people believe in God. Right. And superstition is something you believe in something mm-hmm. in some force. Mm-hmm. Let's say force be with you, <laughs> and you know it's just like some force. And again. Take into account that uh, we have a lot of uh, New Age stuff mm-hmm. all around, and all this, you know, uh, Eastern mysticism, like uh, like you know, Buddhism mm-hmm. or uh, Hindu beliefs, mm-hmm. and all beliefs of like like New Age, like Blavatsky, and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, this thing which they believe actually, which we see in uh, in these Star Wars movies force. Mm-hmm. So they believe in some force and for them God is actually that force. And it's something like neo... I can't even call it neo-paganism. It's, it's just... Um, 
very interesting phenomenon of mass superstition. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, true religion, true faith, it requires responsibility. Sure, but there's the kind uh, of thing. faithfulness and everything like that. But here, well, if you treat that seriously, but most of the people do yes, not. Yes, but but by the treat this, but these superstition things, means they they they, they right. believe ah oh, there is something. Let's let's propitiate God with some like, different the candle. Fo- different forms and of if black is, cat walking. Yes, if there is you know holy water, right. it's a potion. If you drink <laughs> it, right. you you become well. You know there is you can treat something like you might not die yes. uh, tomorrow or you well, might live I mean, one more day. But well, in still they, they use this water. They you know, I don't know what, what they do with it. But okay, uh, uh, one more thing which is unique uh, as we kind of you remember celebrated that not Soviet but still it's like uh, something that we had from our pagan days called Ivan Kupala Day or the day of uh, 6th of July right, when yes. uh, uh, fern flower allegedly emerges and mm-hmm. he or she who finds it will be happy ever after. Well that's um That's very um, marginal holiday. It's not holiday. It's just uh, it used to be celebrated in villages, mm-hmm. uh, but you know, again, in Soviet times, it I uh, don't know how like in uh, the areas where you mm-hmm. come from, mm-hmm. but uh, it's in the western part where mm-hmm. Catholics. Uh, it wasn't that popular. No, it was not popular. But in in, in eastern part, yeah, probably. where like Borisov, my mom, yeah. grandmother mm-hmm. was from Borisov, and from that area. It, it transferred into a very weird um, mm-hmm. ritual. Mm-hmm. Usually, uh, they would uh, because in, in the original uh, celebration there was a bonfire yeah, right. and you know girls and guys they would uh, jumping jump over. over it. But uh, in my childhood, mm-hmm. they, you know, they, in, they, in my when mm-hmm. I was a kid, uh, in this it was in mm-hmm. collective farm. Mm-hmm. They would. It was major actually for for guys there yeah. for you know for for young mm-hmm. people. It was major. Actually, it was major holiday. Mm-hmm. Uh, major, maybe not holiday. It's just celebration. Good, good reason to drink to get drunk. You know, for <laughs> and uh, for they would compete. You know, bef- between different villages, they would compete whose fire would be the greatest. They would actually collect yeah, right, right. collect uh, these big tires from tractors and bigger more and they like the, the coolest was like uh, like 10 or 15 uh, tires from big trucks and then would put you know uh, holy cut you know uh, trees to them then pour gasoline actually mix mixture of gasoline and diesel fuel and then man it was something burning burning <laughs> it was huge fire huge. and then there was you know drinking and etc so and, and after that mm-hmm. they would go to the village to vandalize you know to uh, tour out uh, these Gates benches and fences and, and benches, uh, right? Break, you know, these uh, fences. Yeah, I don't know wh- where this came from. Do we have any political recent holidays in our calendar? Like, I don't. We have uh, this uh, Freedom Day or Din Voli on the twenty oh, fifth yes. of uh, March. Then we have twenty uh, seventh of July, the day when the Constitution was adopted, and there's like third day somewhere in the end of, a- of August when it was kind of enacted or like took into force. So essentially when we talk about independence, it's always like in the United States we have 4th of July and everybody celebrates that knowing what it is. Even with this independence we have like at least three points of view on what we should celebrate. No, those are quite simple because uh, you know uh, I, uh, f- uh, the 28th of March was the the commonly accepted Independence Day of mm-hmm. all Belarusians all around the world because mm-hmm. at that day in back in mm-hmm. uh, 1918 uh, the first Belarusian uh, state mm-hmm. of m- modern era mm-hmm. uh, was proclaimed mm-hmm. so due to to it uh, modern Belarus now exists because you know just after that would be a Soviet so it's social republic but that thing was uh, the first for the, the very first Independence Day from um, From Russian Empire, so it's actually more uh, the political statement. Uh, it's more like uh, you know, it's like uh, for usually it's been celebrated by mm-hmm. those uh, politically minded, nationally mm-hmm. minded mm-hmm. people. And the twenty uh, seventh of uh, what is July, right? Mm-hmm. No, July was the day when. Uh, 
the official independence was proclaimed by mm -hmm. uh, the Soviet, public, Soviet, Soviet uh, again, the, by the parliament at that time. Parliament again, uh, um, independence from Soviet Union. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was a declaration of independence. Mm -hmm. So it's naturally also understandable why. And it, it, it has been until Lukashenko changed it to, to his own version of Independence right, Day. So, 3rd of July, right? So it is Which actually is independence day in Belarus. legitimate uh, Independence Day because uh, it was day to commemorate right. when it has been you know, right. uh, proclaimed. So, but uh, summing up, uh, we have different holidays, of course, of religious nature, political nature, historical nature. But I think uh, what is common, uh, what is the way Belarusians celebrate? It's a lot of booze, uh, oh. sitting at the table. Uh, some people believe that Belarusians, a long, long time ago, when people just sang some songs. But I don't don't know, don't see much singing right now. No, karaoke replaces Karaoke, which is, yes. which is not singing. <laughs> Genuine singing was no, no, different. No, no, no. It's, you know, it, it used to be singing, like folk singing was in past. Mm -hmm. My grandmother was at uh, that time, but um, new, new generation in villages sometimes they could sing it, uh -huh. uh, but you know, this generation passed away, mm -hmm. so uh, this new generation, they sim simply mm -hmm. turn on uh, boom box and they will sing for them, just mm -hmm. uh, if they really want to sing, they go to the karaoke club and sing there. Um, so right, so things change, we still are with the holidays, but it's good to celebrate and uh, I think that the good thing is that we do not, we have fewer and fewer like state imposed holidays that we had in the Soviet Union, so now we have fun. Some people celebrate uh, uh, Scottish holidays, you remember when Irish holidays? Well, they celebrate, yeah, they celebrate Halloween. Uh, yeah, Halloween, yes. some other people will celebrate Polish holidays, so that's good diversity but the I think that uh, the good thing is uh, for any person if whatever he celebrates do not force your own version of holidays on others so be, because if we have state religion state ideology state holiday this state holiday that then definitely that makes a country authoritarian and uh, with a very limited freedom of expression well you see but still what those holidays which we mentioned uh, actually we forgot to mention the new year it, oh yeah, uh, new year it's, uh, it's the major it's the uh, well exactly it's the main <laughs> big elephant in the, the china main, store the main the main holiday which unites all people nobody would argue about it the, absolutely the, the, the new year is uh, the holiday of all belarusian people and it's a major difference between let's say united states europe and uh, belarus because in uh, uh, the West uh, major like uh, highlight of the year, the end of the year holiday is Christmas. So the 25th of uh, December, this the, the hol Christmas holidays, season, seasonal, seasonal greeting. In Belarus, just the beginning of the celebration because the highlight definitely is 31st, first of 31st yes. of December, first of January, when uh, it's a must for everybody to have a big table, a lot of food, uh, staying around. It's a family thing, unlike. Uh, in uh, the West. Again, it has been imposed by Stalin himself. Mm -hmm. He ordered to celebrate it, so to distract mm -hmm. people from the Christmas. Yep. And uh, yeah, but it's still right. It's still in the uh, it, tradition it, it, of Belarusian. You know, it has settled in minds, in, in collective mind, yep. and you know, from generation to generation. When I was kid, it was cool. You know, yeah, this. Exactly. I was choosing, going myself. You know, choosing mm -hmm. this uh, tree, fir tree. Yeah, fir tree. Then we would put, you know, this stuff on it and everything. It was coolest thing. It was kind That's of very good. Yeah, and like, with like all it. these Father Frosts and everything, you know, it's like Santa Claus. <laughs> no, we had Father, Father Frost. Frost. Actually, right. again, it was uh, Stalin's order to impose uh, Father Frost and mm -hmm. uh, this uh, his granddaughter again, <laughs> like fairy, some, fa some fairy, some fairy, yeah, some snow fairy, something snow like fairy, that. Snow fairy, yeah. It's just uh, and uh, again, we had this uh, for for kids. We had this. Uh, um, kind of, you know, magic presentations right. with actors and this uh, Father Frost would, would bring uh, <laughs> gifts, you know, special exactly. gifts. They were special boxes and still they have these special boxes with, with sweets and with candies. I usually in my family what they do is like Christmas, celebrate Christmas uh, holiday and Christmas gifts then New Year gifts and uh, when uh, my relatives who are Orthodox, Russian uh, Orthodox. Uh, for Orthodox is strange. It's like 7th of January, so okay, another 
one. So they on. have severe fast. You know, they have <laughs> right. uh, this f- f- uh, one of this uh, the week of this uh, yeah. fasting, and but they still they have this celebration with uh, with food with drinks. Yeah, that that tells you a lot about the ability of Christians to get together and agree on some dates. They have seven hundred years. They cannot agree on the dates because they have some minor minor differences in the way they preach and they uh, cherish their gods. Vlad, thank you so much for your uh, participation, your input on the uh, on the theme, which is holidays in Belarus. Uh, you see, friends, every country has its own holidays, so Belarus has its own set of holidays. It cannot be uh, said, it cannot be qualified as bad or good. It's just our uh, way of uh, living, of uh, celebrating, of having breaks in our routine, daily uh, chores and activities. So, when you come to Belarus on the 8th of March, make sure that if you visit a household with a woman <laughs> just bring a bottle uh, not a bottle of champagne and a bouquet of flowers don't forget the bottle of vodka on 23rd of uh, 23rd well <laughs> in, in our case Vlad it doesn't refer it's not relevant okay thank you uh, friends if you have some topics you want to uh, hear about if you want some questions to discuss please uh, write to us Vlad and I are active in social networks and uh, we're looking forward to another program which will be in two weeks uh, thank you so much and see you later. Cheerio. Goodbye.